When I was a real young kid growing up in the 80s, I used to think my dad was off his rocker for driving around in the truck with the heat blasted and the window cracked. But here we are. Heat blasted, window cracked. The transition is complete. Another day, another dollar. Maybe a few dollars. Billy's finishing up the drums, stringing them up, drag rope, and our lugs came in so we can finish up the Radio King. Oops. From over here, it looked like you're doing some butt stuff with a chubby robot. <laughs> you're not wrong. I wasn't not doing that. Okay, set a timer. Let's go. So the lugs for this Radio King came in from Drum Factory Direct. We did go with reproductions. Was able to find a couple originals on eBay, but they were in bad shape and the guy wanted 50 bucks for three of them. Fun fact, you can buy this throw off on eBay for $250. Seriously? Yeah. And someone was selling a full snare, the same dimension, 800 bucks. Whoa. So the castings are really clean. They do use a different internal mechanism. Longer swivel nuts with these little neoprene captive thingamabobbers, no spring, and the swivel nuts stick above the profile of the lug. So we turned these oddballs into donors, pulled out their swivel nuts and their springs. I had to clean them up on the wire wheel, and that's what we'll use. The repros also came with these gaskets, but none of the other lugs have them, so we're not using them. The thing is, if I lost control of this spring, it'd probably shoot across the table to you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a drum. Those are some sexy drums. You know that's right. Ship them. Ship it. Got all the hardware bolted back onto the shell. I'm still not sure what this writing inside says, and it appears to be upside down. Clone? Chrome? Someone's name? I don't know. Needs heads. Hey, Pistol Pete! What do you want for drum heads? Oh, actually we gotta order some, but let's put on uh, some of what we have in stock for now, just to get the thing together so we can experiment with snares. Stratas, which are concert heads, HD dry, and G2 coated. Probably G2 coated, the closest I have to what he's asking for. Because I think he wants like a coated ambassador on top, as close to that as I've got. Today I get to throw boxes. There's no drums behind me. There is a kerosene heater behind me, so if I go up in flames, that's why. But no, I went doing what I love. Screwing around. Did I make it? What's the story with that drum? Uh, it was just a, it was a pearl floor tom, pearl master series, black lacquer. I cut plugs from the holes and just sanded it, scuffing it for the glue, you know. 
So the guy sent it to me and was like, hey, I think it'd be really cool to make a rope drum out of this. And I was like, sure. Some gnarly veneer. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm not even sure what it is. It looks cool. veneer storage. Okay, change of plans on this one. We were gonna bring it to tension to experiment with snares, but much like the Gretsch, the beds are really deep, probably for calf skin, and we don't wanna heat shrink these Mylar heads because customer wants Remo heads. Bill wants to experiment with some, I think, silk-wrapped wire, individual strands, um, so that will be interesting, but for now, we're done with this. Back on the shelf. I got the story on this snare. It came in with these two drum kits. These were taking up space in a school. The school had tried to sell them, no buyers. They were gonna just drop them at a donation center, possibly trash them, I'm not sure. So the customer grabbed them, brought them to Bill. He wants to keep the snare. I think it was a partial trade, partial payment for the snare refurb. All right, back to the paid project shelf. Got this snare up here that needs to be torn down and rebuilt. This Gretsch kick just came in with a snare and tom. All three of them are getting new bearing edges. I'm gonna pull the hoops and heads off these, throw all the hardware in some bags, label them, that way they'll be ready to go for flattening and new bearing edges. 14 inch Gretsch snare. It's got the strainer. Throw off is gone, it's got a pearl on it. The muffling knob is really torqued at an angle. Really weird, large vent grommet. That's the hole from where the press-in vent was that got probably killed when they took it out to pull the wrap off. If they wanted to save it, they could have just taken a, a step bit or a uni bit to drill out the center. We'll take this apart. 12 inch tom, black wrap. Not sure what these holes are about. Okay, got the snare stripped. Those are the plugs, looks like poplar dowling. And the tom, which I didn't notice immediately. Five lugs. And I don't have a lot of experience with Gretsch. If anyone knows why they painted their shells silver on the inside, I'd like to know. Bill thinks they were just hiding crappy wood veneer. I don't think that's how you build a drum, buddy. I mean, it's not not how you build a drum. So it's not a drum builder. How you build a drum is however the hell I say you do it. Isn't that how that works? I guess. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Alright, here we go. Nope. Here we go. These two are ready for the spa day. This is the next victim. I mean patient. Good luck with that thing. No idea what you're gonna find when you take that apart. Oh, I know, it's gonna be a shit show. Made by the customer's friend. It's a stave shell. We need to fabricate spacers to get rid of the lug splay. This is a knockoff DW throw. I've never seen one of those. Probably gonna need new bearing edges. And we gotta see if we can fix the wrap, which um, is paper, so it's kinda like a decoupage, I guess you could say. I'm not sure what we're doing there. We have bolts that are too short, so they all had to be countersunk. We're gonna have to use longer bolts anyway, since we'll have to space out the lugs to get rid of the splay. Crack repair, looks like it was done with a strip of veneer or edge banding. I'm gonna take the rest of these lugs off and see, see what happens with that wrap. Okay, where we stand slash what I would do. This turns out to be some kind of I don't know, it's almost like a self-adhesive, like a contact paper. I'm not sure where he got it. Owner's gonna see if he can find the artwork for that. Then if he can, options would be half precision drum, make an actual wrap, but that would be north of $100. Second, probably take it to a colored printer and make a DIY wrap out of clear contact paper. We emailed him, he's gonna 
look for the artwork and let us know and let us know how much money he wants to put into this it's more of a sentimental thing so flatten it recut bearing edges figure out what we're doing with the wrap longer bolts for the lugs are there the hoops are junk the top one looks like sasquatch took a rim shot and just buckled it they're really thin new heads could use a new throw off don't know if he'll want to do that or not so back on the shelf in pieces I'm not making much progress today so this is bill's made in japan snare drum it's branded as ideal it looks like a gretsch clone langerland because i mean this is one of the old school oh is it yeah i'm the clam child although i guess Gretsch, maybe it's i don't know i don't know it's uh it's if gretchen slingerland had a baby also i love the machine screw for the bottom oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll be replacing that. Next project on the docket is this small Deegan xylophone, three octave. Need to make a case for it. Suspend the bars instead of setting on the felt covered rail. Basically using Bill's xylophone as the model because of course Bill has the xylophone. And Bill's truing up the edge of this veneer. We're burning the midnight oil here. Literally, right. we're coming up on midnight. Then we get to see this DIY slip roller veneer press thingy bob in action. You get one guess as to who engineered that thing. I'm guessing Bill Sr., the intern. You know it. This thing is gnarly. Now, do I... I think. I think I got it. You'll find out when that seam comes around. This is how Bill Sr. spring-loaded it. This little top rail thing. It's got a hole for the spring. And then he made a little hardwood key. So the roller goes in, this comes down on top of the roller shaft. That all gets sandwiched in and these are clamped with the hinges. There's one of these on both sides. He's like the Wiley e. Coyote. <laughs> I know, right? That thing's pretty cool. You prefer that over a J roller? That's actually what the veneer supplier recommends to do this instead. So they say that with these contact adhesives, a J roller doesn't give quite enough pressure. But because with this scraper, it's, it comes to kind of a point like you're, you're putting a whole lot of pressure in small areas. So it actually is a lot more effective for these kind of pressure sensitive adhesives than a, a J roller. It doesn't leave any scratches or marring. Uh, it can, but like there's so much other surface prep that's gonna happen to this thing between now and when I put a finish on it that I'm not really too worried about it. Long night. Yeah. You got five rope drums done, a yep. woofer snare started, Yep. veneer on that drum. Yep. I got some powder coating shit hung on a wall, four drums taken apart. <laughs> And I stared at a xylophone. <laughs> yep, that's about right. This thing's gonna be awesome. I can't even remember what kind of wood this is, but it's freaking gorgeous. Uh, all the drums, Scatterball Rangers, five from Drum Corps are finally finished, uh, which is awesome. And uh, Bale is watching me do that. <laughs> that's pretty much what I did. <laughs> yep. Tomorrow's another day. So I hear. <laughs>